Hey guys, Jason, and today I'm proud to announce that we have Bitcoin Core 0.11.0 officially been announced. Now this came out on July 12th, so it's been a little while. I debated on doing it, you know, I always debate on doing these update videos because it sometimes gets negative or positive press depending on just the way it sways. But I had some emails ask me about it here that's coming in the last two weeks, you know, should I upgrade or not? And I think you should. It's always, you know, advised that you should upgrade. Well, I always give it a few days, even though it's been beta, I give it a few days to get tested in public. You know, but I don't send coins in that, you know, variance day um, period. But I just want to give you guys some updates on what's going on with this new update. And so let's get to it. So we have one of the big things that they consider um, important updates is the transaction flooding. Um, basically is a hap protecting against, and if you guys don't remember this, it is um, low transaction um, coin flooding. Now you might say, Jason, what's low transaction flooding cutting? Well, one of the things we had, and I think it was... It was called, it was a um, um, betting site. Um, it was a um, betting and um, gambling site called Satoshi. And it was Satoshi, Satoshi Dice, I think. And they were sending, if you know what one Satoshi is, one Satoshi is like the lowest limit. And they were sending a whole bunch of one Satoshis of credits to their account. And it was basically flooding the transaction logs with all these minimal, really unnecessary transactions, right? The goal of this is to kind of help protect prevent transaction flooding and so you know it's not going to affect the person that's just trying to send three or four dollars to buy a product or spend 20 or 30 to buy something it affects those who are trying to send you know in the usd equivalent one ten thousandth of a cent you know what we'd consider even below a micro transaction um and really the bitcoin whole there's been debate back and forth whether or not this should be enacted but basically this is just protect the nodes and to protect um the pools and the growth really of bitcoin um, so it sets things like the minimal transaction fee, which uh, is 0 0.0000, so four zeros and a five. Uh, and basically that requires that you have to send a transaction when you send a Bitcoin anywhere. And the goal is to kind of, you know, use that Bitcoin transaction fee to limit transaction flooding on the network. It's a unique idea. Um, I, I believe, I'm not sure if this is hardwired into the update. Because I know we did an update before, but you could go into the settings and change it so you didn't have to send a fee out. And I believe this is hardwired now into the update. So that, that's interesting because it now forces you to do a transaction fee, which is interesting. Um, some of their notable changes are um, file, um, block file puning. I could explain that, um, but I don't think the average person is going to uh, truly understand, even if I try to you know put it in layman's terms. And, and it's nothing against people that watch this. It's just from a technical standpoint, it matters, but from a you know educational standpoint and a viewer standpoint, it's one of those where it doesn't really necessarily mean anything to the average user. It's kind of like a non-GUI update, non um, you know graphic update where it's the back code, and so you don't really see anything. But the big thing up that's coming up, um, well, they have some memory usage optimizations, like they always do. They always seem to update that stuff. Always happens. The big thing for me is um, the Tor updates. You may say, well, Tor. If you don't know, and I've done videos on this, Tor is uh, actually developed by the Navy. And it's a way to stay anonymous online. Now, there's different ways to do it. You can use like Tails, and basically it's a bootable CD, and you're completely you know, booting stuff off the RAM. And so there's no way to save anything to the disk. And there's no way to you know, modify who you are. And then you have limited things like um, Tor, which you download and you use. And Tor you know, also has a standalone product where you, know, you just download it and you use it on your computer. Which there's a lot of vulnerabilities with that. That's why I always recommend you use you know the bootable disk of Tails, and then you use Trails. <laughs> that sounds or that sounds really complex, <laughs> but you, I have a video explaining it. You basically you know get the um, bootable disk, and then you use Tor on the bootable operating system, and this basically just makes it more secure. It um, really helps out with some issues where this necessarily isn't if you're using Tails. It's more if you're using it on a your regular computer and you're downloaded Tor. It it helps protect that your Bitcoin information isn't going out. Just first, oh, there's two parts to it. First of all, that your, your anonymity, your, your privacy isn't violated. That, and it goes through that by doing different um, Tor exit nodes. Now, I know if you don't know what Tor is, you're going to say, well, what's an exit node? Basically, all the data comes out of these exit nodes, and there's, there's multiple exit nodes. There's lots of them, and they're, they're ran by normal people. And the, I, the problem is, though, is you, if you have someone that's bad, you know, or, you know, not the, they're a shady person, let's say. They can, you can, they can view your data if they're on their exit node. And this does a job of just trying to make sure that not all your data goes to the same exit node. 
it's one of these things where it's kind of like a non-GUI update. If you're behind the, it's behind the screen. You know, it, you have your GUI platform, your your client, and you never see this stuff going on. But it's security updates, and I have talked about in other videos. Security is really key with Bitcoin, and it's getting better. But I I come from the time when you know Bitcoin security was you know keep an offline wallet, and you know we're so we're trying to update you know security to this, and that it's really great to see they're doing it. They have a huge long change log, and all the people that have helped out. I wish I could just you know thank everybody for always updating the Bitcoin core client QT because it's really important. It really is that we keep you know a very functioning client because even though we have all these online services, people still predominantly love to use the Bitcoin QT wallet, which is a no brainer because it was the original you know client. It's just been updated with a lot of amazing help and work. We have you know some privacy with disabling wallet transaction broadcast. Uh, I, I always, and I talked about this in my Litecoin video, I, feel, I always feel kind of tempted because I could explain, you know, the detailed schematics of all of this. But in reality, things like, you know, the fact that you're going to be more protected with Tor or the fact that the GUI is improved. Those are the things I think people want to hear about. They think, oh, yeah, it looks nicer now. Or, oh, yeah, more secure. There's a security update. People are like, eh, I don't really care about what actually got updated. You know, I just want to know, just like um, with Litecoin, I talked about the PGP um, security update. I can explain that in detail, but sometimes it's better just to know that there's more security updates out there and why you should update. So if you haven't updated already, update the 0.11.0 Bitcoin update for the um, Bitcoin wallet QT. Thanks for watching and I hope you, I, I informed you.